Amen. 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 We thank God again for uh, the songs and everything that was done and said this far. We pray that God will continue to bless uh, each and every one of us as we continue to move forward. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to bow for a word of prayer, thanking God for all that he's doing for each and every one of us, all that he has done. God is good. There is uh, nothing to change that. We want to continue to uh, lift up his holy name and magnify him for who he is. Amen? Amen. Amen. God is good whether we say it or not. God is good. Amen. 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 This time we'll bow for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We thank you again for this great time that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for this privilege, this blessing, Lord, to even be here today. We thank you, Lord, for just again encouraging us, blessing us even past last week when it was uh, cold and, and weather was coming. We just thank you, Lord, that you've given us another Sunday, Lord, that we might be able to come together to see each other, to fellowship, and Lord, to be a part of your service. We thank you that you've opened our eyes and given us our, our sight, our abilities to be able to see, to hear, and to be able to function. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us a reasonable portion of our health and strength. We thank you for our cognitive abilities and all that you're doing in uh, the lives of your people. Continue to strengthen us and help us, Lord, as we continue to uh, move in the way that you uh, call us to go, to have, to have us to move. We just thank you, Lord, for strengthening us and then walking with us and giving us the ability to walk upright. We thank you, Lord, that you've blessed us to be able to, again, uh, just to, to walk in your presence, just to be a part of your service, to be a part of your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, as you continue to open doors that no man can close and close doors that no man can open. We thank you, Lord, even as we come before you for all the good things that you've done in our life and all the things, Lord, that have even taught us and brought us uh, from a mighty long way. We ask today, Lord, that you would continue to bless the sick and the shut in, bless those bereaved families, bless, Lord, even those that don't know you and the pardon of their own sin. We continue to pray for our bereaved families, uh, the victims of war, Bertha Mae Smith family, uh, Demetrius Joseph family, uh, Jane Wesley Roberts Sr. family, the Billy Ruth Taylor family, uh, Mary Taylor Lathan in in the uh, Houston family, the Grant family, the Wilson family, Troy Taylor, Merle Newsom, the Wright family, Demisha Sample Garner, Danielle Taylor, the Taylor family, Charlie Williamson, Sharice Miller, Tyrone Peters, the Williams family, Carl Williams Jr., Donna Harrison, Renee Huntington, the Hodge family, the Mitchell family, Alma Ruth Lathan, Trinity Bass, Judy Martin, Clarence Earl, Melvie Hudson, Tim Sims, Vernell and Florence Williams, Kim Taylor, Ella Taylor, Annie Mae Hayes, Mary Jefferson, Kevin Earl, Ann Green, David and Michelle Lacey, Carl and Sandra Williams, Sharon Bates, DeAndrea Thompson, Sanaya Schuyler, Lysandra Campbell, Tanika Taylor, Jacoby Campbell, the Barrow family, Pastor Samuel and Tanya Taylor, and our entire church family, we just continue to thank you and give glory and praise to your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. God is good, and we continue to just uh, praise him, lift up his holy name, because he's a good God, and there's none like him in heaven nor earth. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 <clears throat> and amen. Amen. Uh, I guess the first Sunday of the year, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the Lord's Supper, and hopefully getting a little bit more in depth of what it's about and what it, what it means. So as we go into our word today, we'll go to Matthew, the 26th chapter, um, starting at the 26th verse. We'll read a few verses and, and then we'll, we'll pray again. Uh, Matthew 26, 26, uh, New American Standard Version. And while they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. 
And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Father, we thank you for your word of blessing. Give us what to say, give us what to hear, that it all may be good and pleasing in your sight. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Just for our topic sakes, we'll just call it the Lord's Supper. Amen. The Lord's Supper. Amen. So as we as we institute the, our uh, ordinance here at the, the church, we come from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, where Paul had, was setting things in order um, with the church of Corinth. And as he was setting these things in order, uh, he was giving them the way that the Lord's Supper should be taken. Uh, just for reading, uh, verse 20 says, Therefore, when you, need, when you meet together, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in your eating, each one takes his own supper first, and one is hungry and another is drunk. What? Do you have houses in which to eat and drink, or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? In this I will not praise you. And then of course it goes into uh, the 23rd verse where it says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So as we, we look at that and the rest of it that uh, he, he continued to explain, we move through that and get the understanding that the Lord's Supper is something more important than just gathering together to eat bread and to drink uh, from the cup of wine or the representation of wine which we use uh, the juice. So, but as we look at that and get the understanding that Paul was stressing to the Corinthian church that this feast was not just for them to come together just to eat and leave other people out and uh, to, you know, those that get there early, you know, have their, their first deals and they eat everything without leaving some for others, uh, not with the spirit of sharing and different things like that. So Paul was setting things in order that they might be able to do this ordinance correctly. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, going back to Matthew, uh, Jesus, as he was instituting this particular supper, he had already told the disciples to ready a room and everything for the Passover because he knew that this was the last one that he would have with them while he was alive on uh, this side. So he was expressing to them how important it was for them to for them to eat this Passover meal at this particular time and basically for them to be together so that he can impart it to them the things that he needed to leave with them. Amen. 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 So he says uh, again, and while they were eating, Jesus took some bread and after a blessing, he broke it and gave to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. In reference to the Passover, as the plagues were coming up on Egypt where God was bringing forth Egypt, uh, excuse me, the, the, Israel, the Israelites out of Egypt, as the, the plague was, was, of the angel of death was about to come, 
it was set out for the children of Israel to be able to uh, sacrifice a lamb, put the blood on the, the top and the sides of the, their door so that the dead angel would pass them by. And thus we call it the Passover. So it was a deep uh, ritual or spiritual event that was happening to ready them to get uh, themselves in order to, to be able to get their freedom from Egypt. And as we, we, we know the story and as we've seen uh, the, the, the movies and we've seen, we've read in, in the word everything that was necessary to bring them to this particular place to where they were going to be free. And it was set as a as a annual thing for them to be able to to do. So the Passover came and then there was the uh, Feast of the Unleavened Bread. So when they would would take this 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 supper, it was like they had to be ready to move. So they didn't have time to put uh, the, the leaven in, in, the, in the bread. They didn't have time to do all the things that were necessary to, uh, that they would normally do because they were in a hurry basically to get out of Egypt. So the representation was continued and passed down through that particular festival for them to be able to uh, understand how God again wanted them to know that he had delivered them from bondage. He had set them free from 400 years of slavery. Mm -hmm. So it was a, something for them to remember. Mm -hmm. And so they would give glory and they would give praise and they would give honor to God in respect of this. So we get the understanding still that uh, Jesus having this in mind was basically going to institute something along the same lines but basically I'll say a little different because the Passover and the unleavened bread was still supposed to happen but now something I don't want to say more significant but I do want to say it more significant was about to happen because Jesus was about to free all of us from sin from the bondage that, that, that had, we had been in from the beginning of time, since the beginning of Adam and Eve sinning, we were about to be set free because Jesus, he was the only one that was able, his blood was the only one that was uh, uh, worthy of, of setting us free. So we began to look at what he was doing and what he was instituting and how he was bringing this uh, thing forward so that the people could see and understand uh, how this was supposed to relate to us now in the New Testament. Because as he said, this was, as he said in verse uh, 28, for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins where the, the Passover was setting them free from the bondage of, of Egypt, we're now being set free from our sin because of what Jesus was about to do. He wanted us to understand. He wanted his, the, the disciples to know and to understand that what they were doing, again, was not just something ordinary, not just an ordinary meal, not just an ordinary drink, but it was something significant that they needed to know and that they needed to understand. So he says, for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. So we have to recognize that as we uh, pass the cup and the, the bread around, we're not just coming together to eat this bread for tradition. We're eating it for the meaning that was set forth for it to be. Because Jesus again was sacrificing himself to become uh, our sacrifice in everything that we needed 
for redemption. Mm -hmm. He was setting everything in place. He was making everything happen so that we could get, uh, again, have uh, the right, basically, to be able to be in the kingdom of God. Amen. And he was breaking it down for his disciples, and it was said that it was passed down even to the Gentiles. So we want to know and we want to understand that as we take up the bread, that this bread is a representation not necessarily the body of, of Christ. Because as he was instituting this, he was there in his bodily form. So therefore, they were not truly eating from his body, and his blood was still on the inside of his body. So therefore, they were not truly drinking of his blood. But it was a representation that was needed for us to understand how important this, this bread symbolizing his body and this blood symbolizing the, the cleansing, the washing away of all of our sins. Okay. And as we continue to just, just again, just glorify God, just thank God for uh, this even happening. Because Jesus was basically about to lose his life for us, for the whole world, for everyone. And, and, and today, I believe, we, we take it so lightly. Again, we take it as a traditional thing, just like the 4th of July or something. When it rolls around, you know, we think we're supposed to barbecue, so that's what we do. So on, on uh, any given day that, that we partake of the, the Lord's Supper, you know, it just becomes that particular day for us. But we have to understand the significance of us being trapped in our sins with no way out except for Jesus. Except for his blood that is setting us free uh, from our, our sins. <clears throat> uh, he said, each of you drink from it, for this is my blood. The cup represents his blood. The blood which uh, com it, it confirm confirms the covenant that he was making. And as Paul talks about it in Corinthians, he said a new covenant to distinguish it from the old covenant. The Passover and everything, these festivals were set up for Israel as they were, again, coming out of Egypt. But this instituted Lord's Supper is set up for all of us to be able to partake of and to receive it in the manner in which it should be received mm -hmm. out of love. It was basically uh, a love feast. We should be able to uh, care about one another when we're, we're doing this. It says that we, we should wait for one another. We should be able to do all that God has called us to do in loving each other and, and, and respecting the ordinance again for what it is, Amen. for what it is. God is, is, is so good, and we just, we, we just miss the points of some time of what he's doing and how he's carrying us and how he's making us what he wants us to be. Because with this, this new covenant, with this new supper being uh, put in place, we're now able to, to sit down with, and, and celebrate together this great institution uh, with our fellow brothers and sisters. Wow. And, and we do this on the basis of faith. Those of us who believe in, in, and trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we take this, this in faith. Mm -hmm. So those of us who don't believe should not be partaking in this ordinance. Those of us who are not at the age to understand what salvation means, what it means to have our, our sins forgiven, what sin actually means, what, uh, what the, the, the real reason that Jesus had to come, and, and not just you know to make it Christmas, but the real reason that he had to come to redeem and, and save uh, his people. We have to, we have, to have a, a full I believe intact understanding 
and belief to be able to partake in this and to do it rightly or correctly. So we want everybody in our congregation to understand and to know what Jesus did by sacrificing himself as the sacrificial lamb. What, he, what it meant for him to, to die at this particular time for the forgiveness of sins as, as it is expressed right here for he said, uh, which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. We all, I think, want our sins forgiven. We all want to uh, have the faith and confidence that Jesus' blood washed away all of our sins, past, present, and future. That this 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 took place for us, and therefore we don't know how, we don't have to look back now on the sins that of the past and let them bog us down. We, we need to be able to understand how salvation came into place because of this completed work of Jesus. Amen. And without this full understanding, we can't really correctly take partake of this ordinance. Partic uh, uh, in particular, give thanks for something that we're not thankful for. And understand something that we really don't understand. We need to be able to, again, when we take the bread, understand that it's representing his body that was beaten, that was broken, that was torn for us. Because it was a violent scene. We, we need to understand that his body was truly broken for us and that on that cross he, his blood was shed not just when the spear pierced him in the side but even from the crown of thorns that came on his head and, and, and blood was running out of his head from the whip the uh, whipping that he, he took the uh, the 40 lashes or whatever that was hitting him in, in his back. The blood came streaming down. And it was all for us. Now how many of us would stand as a substitute in death for anybody else? How many of us would sacrifice our own lives I'll say for at this particular time for people we don't even know but Jesus is all knowing so therefore he, he knows us but he did this even when we wasn't born even before we came into being he sacrificed himself so that we would be able to I, I guess come to church have the church instituted and we'd be able to be here and to participate in this ordinance because it's such a significant part of the church. We need to understand the true meaning of how the sacrificing of the lamb was for us. So like the Passover, when the death angel came in to the house, upon a house and the blood was on the house he passed over it therefore no one in the house had to die because they had sacrificed the lamb and did as they were told and put the blood where it was supposed to go where it was supposed to be and everybody that was inside of that home at that particular time was saved and the lamb was set there for them to be able to uh, eat. Therefore, they had a, a, a feast to where they could eat that sacrificial lamb. And everything was set in place for them to be saved. Because, again, they were about to be freed from the bondage 
of slavery from Egypt. And as they were participating in this, and they heard the screams, and they, they understood that those Egyptians, those people who did not participate, who did not put their blood, the blood of the lamb, on their doorposts, that those firstborn was going to die. That there was going to be death all over the land. For those who didn't participate, those who didn't believe, those who were not a part of what he was doing at this particular time, these Israelites understood that something was about to happen and it did. It did. So with it happening and with them now being saved, they understood that now that this was something that they had to commemorate and therefore it became a, a feast, a, a festival for them to be able to, again, uh, commemorate year after year after year at that same particular time. And as we now, as I, I go back to uh, 1 Corinthians, where Paul is saying that this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So therefore, we are not to forget how we obtained salvation. How we were redeemed. How he was our, the propitiation for us. How he was our substitute. How he was the sacrificial lamb that had to be slain that we might be able to be set free. We have to be able to remember these things. He said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. He does not want us to forget his death. He does not want us to forget the significance of what it meant for him to die. Because it wasn't, again, an ordinary death. This death had some significance to it. It had some mm to it. It, it, it wasn't just a, I, I went to a, a, one of my cousin's funeral this week. It, it, it wasn't the same type of death. She yet laid in, in the box. But Jesus didn't. Because of his death, his burial, and his resurrection, we have the forgiveness of sins and new life. It's, it's just a wonderful package. He suffered so that we didn't have to. He died so that we don't have to. He took the sting of death away so that we won't never have to go through it. And when we're talking about this, this, this thing, this, this, not the, not the sleep that Christians are, are supposed to participate in, what, what we call death now, but the separation from God. We never again have to be separated from God. We can be with Him for eternity. Because Jesus has set us free. And the same way he took the, the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We institute our Lord's Supper on the first Sunday. So on the first Sunday, we commemorate the death of of Jesus, the, his broken body, and the blood that he shed, knowing full well that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. That if there's no blood, there is no forgiven sin. And we have to understand that. So during this particular uh, feast, 
they would, they, would, they would drink from the cup about four different times. They would give a couple of different blessings at the different times. And it, it, it was believed that Jesus on the third cup is when he instituted the Lord's Supper. That it, it's when he gave this to the disciples so that they would understand and know. But because, because we have the word of God, we understand that they didn't understand. They didn't quite know that he had, uh, he had to die. And they wasn't quite ready for it. But if he didn't die, we didn't get forgiven. If he didn't shed his blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Again, it wasn't just ordinary blood. I, I go to the, the doctor every three months or so, and they, they stick this needle in my arm and they take blood. We call it labs. That blood has no significance except to tell me what's right with me and what's wrong with me. It has no saving power. It has no condemning power. It has nothing. It's just the blood of Sam. But when we begin to talk about the blood of Jesus, who washes away all of our sins, and not just mine, and not just yours, but the whole world, it's a different type of blood, a one-time sacrifice for all time. And it's worth remembering. It's worth explaining. It's worth us having a full understanding of it so that we'll know how to govern ourselves in the church. We, we passed the, 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 the container with the, 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 the bread and, and if somebody started grabbing two and three, we know we have a problem. They say, well, I'm hungry. Well, Paul has something for that. He says, uh, so then, my brethren, when you come together, eat, wait for one another. If anyone is hungry, what? Let him eat at home. Let him eat at home. So we don't come to church for when we have the Lord's Supper to just eat the, the bread and drink the cup. Well, I'm getting two or three cups. Why? I'm thirsty and I like the juice. The juice tastes good. No. That, that's, that's not the significance of it. That's not what we do. Because it's the representation of the blood that was shed for our sins. Man. Now, we, we, we really want to be Joyful. We want to be thankful that he died for us. We want to appreciate that. And so to do that, we remember this as often as we can. That finished work, that complete work that he did for us that we couldn't do for ourselves. Now, if I could die for myself and everything be all right, Everything wouldn't be all right, because I'd be dead. If you could die for me, or I could die for you, everything wouldn't be all right. We'd be dead, you'd be alive, but the other person would be dead. But that's not the way it worked for Jesus. Because the same Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that raised Jesus from the dead is the same one that indwells us today. Man. So that same getting up power, that same dunamis power mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit makes us alive in Christ. Amen. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Amen? Amen. 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 So we want to continue to remember. We want to continue to respect the ordinance that has been put forth before us. Again, as we look in 1 Corinthians, it says, 
For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim. You're saying that this is what? The Lord's death until he comes. I remember what he done for me. I remember that he died on a cross for me when he didn't have to. I remember that he shed his blood for me when he didn't have to. But because God called him to be that sacrificial lamb, that substitute for us. In other words, what he what he, he he's doing, he says, Sam sinned. But I'm gonna go to the cross for him. I'm gonna have my body broken for Sam. So Sam's body doesn't have to be broken. I'm gonna shed my blood for Sam. So that Sam doesn't have to shed his blood. I'm going to open up ways for Sam now to be able to, to communicate with the Father. When the communication was broken, I'm going to open up that avenue again. I'm going to, I'm going to give him new life. I'm going to pass him away from the old man to the new man. I can't become new on my own. I, I can't become alive on my own. Because Paul talked about us, us being dead in our trespasses and our sins. I can't do none of that on my own. The, the, the whole thing that was set up that Moses couldn't do it, Elijah couldn't do it, uh, Samson couldn't do it, Abraham couldn't do it, Noah couldn't do it, none of them couldn't do it. But it came about at the right time that Jesus was to be born to save the whole world from sin. First John says that if you say that you have no sin, you lie and do not tell the truth. So when you first start thinking that you don't have sin, that's one of your sins, thinking that you don't. We have this avenue that is set for us to have faith and to believe that Jesus set forth this, uh, uh, that he completed this substitutionary uh, death for us. And then three days came back. If we go to Matthew 28, what he, and he, he he talks about with all power. All power in his hands. So he has all of this power in his hands. He has the power of life and death in his hands. He has everything in his hands. All power. All power. He says, therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner mm -hmm. shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. So therefore, we have to have ourselves right. We have to be able to take this, 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 this Lord's Supper correctly. Because we don't want to take it incorrectly because it says, therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner a manner that is not sufficient for the way that it's supposed to be taken, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. I don't want to be guilty of none of that. We want to make sure that we, we're coming right. He says, so, but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. So you have the opportunity to examine yourself to see where you stand. See, to see whether you're you're, you're supposed to be, I'm going <clears> to <throat> drop the un off of this word and put able to take this in a worthy manner. Because you want to take it in the, the worthy manner, therefore you won't be guilty of his body and his blood. For he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself if he does not judge the body rightly. The thing about rightly is that what we think is right and what God says is right might not be the same thing. 
So we have to we have to judge ourselves according to his word, according to how he's already set it up, instead of what us making up something ourselves and making ourselves thinking we're right when we're not. We we can't we can't set the rules. The rules have already been set. I, I know how some of us don't like that. When we don't like a rule, we don't want to participate in it. But if you choose not to participate uh, in, in this one, you might find yourself on the wrong side of uh, grace. Amen. For for he who eats and drinks eats and drinks judgment to himself if he does not judge the body rightly. So for this reason, many among you are weak and sick, and a number sleep. We have to understand the seriousness of this. It's not, again, just taking the bread and eating it and taking the cup and drinking from it. We have to have the significance behind it. We have to have the whole weight of what it means behind it. We have to have faith and we have to believe and trust that everything that God has already said and told us about this situation is true. Therefore, we judge ourselves rightly. Therefore, we uh, don't eat in an unworthy manner. And then he says, but if we judge ourselves rightly, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are disciplined by the Lord in order that we may not be condemned along with the world. We don't want to be characterized with the world. We don't want to be caught up with the condemnation or the judgment that the world is going to get. Because if we're believers and, and we're trusting in God and we have faith like we're supposed to, we shouldn't even be a part of what the world is already uh, uh, has going. We're about something totally, totally different. We're about walking right before God. We're about pleasing God. We're about doing the word of God. We're about being what God and who God wants us to be. That's who we are. And the world is not. They're totally opposite or different of who we are. Yeah. They're selfish. They're greedy. They're murderers. They're liars. They're cheaters. They're coveters. They're all these other different things. But we shouldn't be. Because we've been washed in the blood. We're supposed to be different. So many of us want to look like them. We want to dress like them. We want to talk like them. We want to be a part of what they're doing so much that we're bringing what they're doing into the church. But the word tells us to be separate. Be separate from them. We should walk differently. We should be about doing uh, 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 things differently. So therefore what? Romans 12 and 1 says, I urge you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to, the, to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may not prove, that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. That's where we're stand. That's what keep us from being judged with the world. And that's where we want to be. We want to understand what the Lord's Supper is about because we want to do it correctly. We, we want to do it in a worthy manner. Amen? Amen. So therefore, if there was something wrong with the way that we were doing it, it's going to be corrected by the next time that we take it. Amen. If we need some, some more in-depth studying on it, which, which can happen because there's a lot more in, uh, in, in this than what I'm actually saying. It's a lot more about uh, uh, the Passover. It's a lot more about the, the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It's a lot more about how all of this came together for Jesus to be able to institute the Lord's Supper. It's, it's 
about the sacrificial lamb. It, it's a lot more about all of that. And for us to, to have that correct understanding, if we need to get together and figure it out, that's what we have to do. Because we want to do it right. We want to do it right. So I pray that each and every one of you will continue to uh, find yourself doing what God has called you to do. Hopefully that we, again, can get the understanding of what God wants us to do, how he wants us to implement the, the Lord's Supper, how the church should truly do it, and to do it in a right way, not necessarily in a traditional way, but in the correct way. The, the way that we've been called to do it. The way that Paul says to do it in uh, 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 1 Corinthians 11. We, we want to do it right because when we do things right like God wants us to do it, we find favor with him. Amen. We, uh, like I said, we won't be judged with the world because we'll be doing the right and the correct thing. Amen? Amen. 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 May God continue to bless and keep you uh, as we continue to talk about this, the Lord's Supper. We pray that, again, that hopefully something was said to encourage you to believe and to trust that when Jesus instituted this, that it was right. And when we do it today, it still needs to be done right. Each and every time that we participate in it. Remember the significance of why it happened and why it had to happen. Again, may God continue to bless you and keep you. We pray that God will continue to allow you to move forward again in everything that you're doing. We pray that his blessing, his favor will continue to be upon you. May God bless you and keep you.